This is the Male Rights Activist Podcast, episode 200, where we focus on relationships, sports, pop culture, and politics from a managed point of view. First of all, we want to thank our listeners, our new ones, our OGs. Thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging with Bella. What up? On today's show, we have a post nut from a woman who tried to use sex to help her son get more playing time. Hey, man, I still bench my son. That shit don't work on me. <laughs> ah, that's funny, bro. Trump says it's time to arm our teachers. If they do that, I can guarantee the suspension rate will go down. I guarantee you that, dog. We have a dear earth from a woman who wants to know if she should give her ex some nookie on an overnight soccer trip. And did all sets to crawl backs work? We're going to break that down and more. Right now. This is the MRA Podcast with Kyle and Kamal, where men come to talk and women come to eavesdrop. I am Kyle. I am Kamal. And we are helping you to understand the man you love. Let's get to the news, Kamal. Come on, man. Let's get into it. <laughs> Since the latest school shooting, the question is being raised. Is the most recent school shooting a gun issue or a mental health issue? Mm. One mental health expert said it's very rare for a mass shooter to have a diagnosed mental health condition. And that don't mean he ain't got one come out. No. That's like if you're on crack, you don't have to be diagnosed from a dentist. No, de- definitely met. <laughs> oh, I just know exactly what that is. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it is. Very obvious, dog. Uh, Speaking of uh, this terrible, terrible mass shooting, while trying to defend the AR-15, Donald Trump Mm -hmm. Jr. suggested that Uvalde mass shooter could have murdered his 21 victims with a bat. No, he didn't. He did. And when I hear shit like this, is obviously this privileged dude ain't never played freeze tag. He was never hit. (laughs) There's no way you tagging 21 people. Even with a that bat. That is funny. That is <laughs> never, funny. Well, he probably played, but he's, he was never hit. Dude, he's <laughs> never a simple game of freeze tag will let you know that this does not make it's sense. Impossible. Your theory is useless. <laughs> oh my god, that's as funny. As soon as you chase one person, everybody <laughs> else it. scatters in the opposite. Just that's everywhere. It, a bat. I mean, oh man, don't get me started. Yeah. This this we we we're keeping it light, it's a monologue, but that really just <laughs> gave me a visceral feeling of fury. To hear that kind of bullshit, man. Yeah, man. Hey, man, Sweden and Finland want to join the United Nations, but they are getting some pushback from Turkey. Turkey, as you may know, is the Joe Manchin of the United Nations, Kamal. Because of the Turkish president's recent antics, there are some talk from ex-Senator Joe Lieberman to get rid of Turkey from the UN, Kamal. Huh. But yeah, but you can't get rid of Turkey because number one, they have the second biggest military in the UN. Number two, we have nuclear weapons in Turkey. And number three, if you get rid of Turkey, what's Hungary going to do? Ha! (laughs) (laughs) It makes sense. Hungary's here. You got to have Turkey. You got if you got hungry, you gotta have turkey. You gotta have turkey. No, I'm just saying, dog. <laughs> Yo, good hire analyzed data from the U.S. Census Bureau, the Bureau mm-hmm. of Labor Statistics, and the U.S. Mm-hmm. Department of Commerce, and they determined mm-hmm. ten cities, ten U.S. cities where women are most likely to earn a hundred thousand dollars or more per year. Nice, yeah. nice. Spoiler alert: mm-hmm. none of the cities have professional NBA teams. <laughs> That's cold, man. That's cold, man. No, no. See, sh- shouts out to our girl Brittany Grinder, man. If they was, if they just paid her a good living wage, she wouldn't be in Russia right now, though. No, 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 no. And speaking of professional sports, Kamal, San Francisco Giants, Jock Peterson got slapped before a game by a Cincinnati Red named Tommy Pham. Wow. Yeah, man, that's crazy that he did this, especially since there's a guy on the Dodgers named Will Smith. <laughs> is there really that <laughs> it really is no there really is oh sheesh yeah there really is dude damn yeah that is wow i know when he yeah. the next day his his twitter mentions was like you son of a bitch <laughs> like, i didn't do anything i did nothing i didn't run this week why y'all I didn't run exactly 
That's a wild shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, a suspect on the run for a mass gang shooting in Sacramento Uh-oh. was arrested in Las Vegas because mm-hmm. when you're on mm-hmm. the run, mm-hmm. the best place to hide is a city that has facial recognition technology <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> if you're wanted by the police <laughs> oh my and you're trying God. to hide you out, Vegas. Don't go to Vegas. Yeah, don't go to Vegas. How about that? Oh, oh, oh that's probably why he got caught. He That's probably why I got Vegas, caught. Step ass. one, don't go to Vegas, man. <laughs> and man, one of your favorite comedians come out. Dio Hughley uh, and Monique got into it at a show after a promoter had them both thinking they were the headliner, come out. I love Dio. Yeah, man. This is nothing new, according to a person who thought she was the promoter's wife. <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker don't know how to tell who's one and two. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Yo, have you heard this, man? What's Paul that? Pelosi. You ever heard of him? He's the, uh, yeah, Nancy's husband. Yeah, the eighty-two-year-old husband of Nancy Pelosi. Side note: mm-hmm. that sucks when every time they mention you, you got to mention. You know, what I'm saying I let you know mm-hmm. who's the A side. You never heard like Denzel Washington, husband of. No, nah, don't even nah. know. His, you just said, yeah, no. Nah, nah. I don't even know his wife's name. Uh, Shamika. I just, Roberta. I think it's Miss Pauletta. Oh, Pauletta, like yeah, you never hear that. Mm-hmm. But so uh, mm-hmm. Paul Pelosi was arrested this weekend on suspicion of DUI in Northern California. Mm, Paul, but not Pauletta. No, got you. Yeah, Paul, not yeah. Nancy. <laughs> oh, Pauletta, got you. Yeah. Yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Police say they pulled him over after they noticed him driving erratically. Mm. But in his defense, Kyle, the man's 82 years old. I say check his piss <laughs> if he wasn't driving erratically. You know. How is this motherfucker so right. focused? Yeah, this nigga's 82 just driving straight <laughs> in between lines. Like, man, pull, yeah. pull him over. Yeah, man, what's really going on, dog? <laughs> yeah. What's he on, dog? Yeah, what is this man on? The new and improved Kamal. You guys are seeing him. He's lean and mean. He probably didn't celebrate this, but it was Saturday. It was National Hamburger Day, Kamal. I missed that? Yeah, you did miss it. Or as they call it in Los Angeles, National Cheat Meal Day. <laughs> that shit used <laughs> to be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday for me. Absolutely, National. bro. At least every Thursday for me yeah. in my good old days. Yeah, man. Yo, new research shows that ADH medication doesn't actually help kids learn. Oh. Yep. But by not having kids take their ADH medication, it helps teachers mm-hmm. learn how to be functional alcoholics. <laughs> Right. It's a nice little gateway for the teachers, huh? Right, right. So, yeah, yeah it'll help nice them learn, gateway. but it helps the teachers mm-hmm. out tremendously. Trust me on that one. Tremendously. <laughs> You're one to know, right? Yeah, exactly. Hey, man, last one for me, man. Pete Davidson announced that he is leaving Saturday Night Live. He is starting a new career as a stay at home stepdad. <laughs> it, it pays probably more. It probably does. It probably pays a lot more, a ton more. A whole lot more. Oh, Yo, yeah. Finally for me, man, mm-hmm. a 66-year-old Irish man lost his memory after having mm. sex with his wife. <laughs> right. And Kyle, let me tell you something. The wife is understandably devastated. She said he told her to fuck his brains out, but she thinks she kind of went too far. <laughs> Come on, wait a minute, dude. No, you're supposed to lose your memory when you have a sex with, with a woman that's not your wife. Exactly. He was like, I, I, I don't remember where I was last night. What am baby. I doing here? <laughs> Who are <Forgot>. you? <laughs> Who are you? And why is my swipe hurting? Yeah, badly, man. Yeah. We come back, man. We have some feedback, and then we have a post note from a woman who tried to use sex to help her son get more playing time. Did it work? Find out soon. It is the MRA Podcast. Hey, what's up, guys? I sure hope you're enjoying the show. If you like it, I invite you to go to our website, themrapodcast.com, and catch up on over 100 episodes that we have in store for you. You ain't working. You might as well check us out. And if you want some more, go over to The World According to Cheryl and check me out on Cheryl Underwood's podcast. We post content there every single day. We have her normal radio show labeled SUR, and then the Cheryl Underwood podcast where we get into her personal business every Friday. Then on the weekends, we have the special shows and range from late night cupcake to auntie Cheryl's house party to our gospel show spiritual nourishment you gotta check out the world according to Cheryl even though I ain't on it ah. 
We got the feedback, homie. Tui now. Yeah, man. Frankie says, I saw one of your jokes on Instagram, and I see you are finally going video with your podcast. It's about time. Big fan, Frankie and Monrovia. Also, shouts out to Dominique Purdy and Kareem Gates. A couple of, especially Kareem Gates, man. Hating. Saying we were sca too scared to do video. Well, now, how you like us now, Gates? Man, now I gotta, I gotta... I can't just be like working from home with basketball shorts on and shit. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta <laughs> this shit gonna cost me some money. I gotta, I gotta hit the mall. Now I noticed, <laughs> man, you got a fresh iron shirt today. So they can come out. Oh, this is this is this is just fucking around. I'm gonna have to have some cool shit next time. Nah, shit, man, get a that, stylist. <laughs> your ego, man. This nigga gonna show up and make up and shit. Like what exactly. the fuck? Who is this guy? Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try fresh, that uh, that fake. I'm gonna try that fake fade. Bro, I've I've met your mom. This is no shade. She's always regal every time I see her. And her son does the same shit. Pops too, man. Never takes a down off. So, dude, I've never seen you on sloppy mode. You always uh, seem like your hair, hair is fresh. The outfit is fresh. And I'm like, where is this well, Negro coming from? My hair being fresh. It's like, come on, man. It's like, I only oh, don't, got, I only don't got act, two choices. Hold up. Don't act like you don't go to the barbershop every week, player. Well, I'm saying, but I only got two choices. Like, having it extra extra crispy clean or, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, rocking the homie the clown. It's like, I don't really got many <laughs> options. Hey, man. We come back, man. We have a post up from a woman who had plenty of options. She tried to use sex to get her son more playing time. Did it work? Find out next at the MRA Podcast. <laughs> According to Webster's Dictionary, being in post-nut mode is when you have a clear mind and you can make sound decisions as if you just busted a nut. Yeah, I don't know if Webster actually said that. Nah, he didn't. But our listener Big Easy Q told us all about it and we can relate. Women, men, so listen. If you have a story of when you did something foolish. In pre-nut mode. Yeah, something really dumb. Maybe it was top grime. Especially something in pre-nut mode you don't want nobody to know about. Hit us up and we'll tell the world. We can all laugh at your expense and hopefully you'll learn from your mistakes. Aristotle once said, the results of pre-nut mode is the best teacher. I think he said some shit like that. Send us your stories at DearIrby at the MRAPodcast.com. That's DearIrby at the MRAPodcast.com. And now, it's time for a post-nut mode story, only on the MRA Podcast. Okay, this one is from Katina, like Katina Mobley. Katina in Moval. Katina says, my son plays year round basketball and he's really good but he doesn't get the playing time i think he deserves we travel every weekend and i decided to have a meeting with the coach if i'm being honest i plan on seducing him to make him give my son some more playing time damn your mama sure does care about your education she sure does <laughs> Damn, man. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. So we met for drinks in the team hotel, and I invited him to my room. We had sex, but it was horrible. This guy was sweating like he was in a sauna. It was so gross. His body fooled me. He was skinny, but not in shape at all. Then he he only lasted. Go ahead, dog. I hate you. That shit sound like me. Are you the coach? Yeah, shit. I coach basketball. I don't <laughs> <laughs> oh man, maybe this is a, a maybe she changed the sport to uh, for all right. Innocent. This is my, no, that would mean I was knocking some of the parents. Yeah, that was exactly what this would mean, man. His body fooled me. He was skinny, not in shape at all. He only lasted three minutes. Mm. That ain't me. Okay, good, good, yeah, good, 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 good. Here we go. Okay, I'm okay professional. Okay. There, that's what I'm talking about. Worst <laughs> sex ever. And to make matters worse, my son did not get one inning more player type SMH. <laughs> Oh, man, Katina. Where did, where did Katina go wrong, Kamal? Well, I got to say, Katina probably thought she had super cooch. We talked ah, about this years ago. Yes. Look at us flossing now that we're on episode 200. Yeah. Way, way back when <laughs> we was in the teens and the 15s. What did we, what did we say, Kamal? Every woman thinks and every guy thinks. Break it down. Right. Everybody, yeah, everybody, every dude think they got hands, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. every woman think they got super cooch. Like, it's just amazing. Mm-hmm. And I got to say, Coach sampled the goods. It changed <laughs> Not nothing. It changed. it changed absolutely nothing. Your boy your boy still rolled the pine. <laughs> and I got to say, if it, was, if it was some, you know, raging water, slippity slide, extra good good, that boy would have been starting pitcher. Hilarious. No matter how many runs he gave up. Oh, man, that is funny, man. <laughs> it was so bad, the coach went and slapped the player. 
<laughs> slapped the player and, right. and probably benched him. Like, just get off the team. Get your ass out of here, man. Get your ass out of here. <laughs> the coach is mean all of a sudden. Why is uh, Coach being even meaner? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the beats me, dog. Pops probably know. Like, hey, I, uh, I, yeah, that's why I left. <laughs> that's, that's fucked up. <laughs> if we come back, Trump says it's time to arm our teachers. Do we agree? A former teacher and a current teacher will let you know what we think next. It is the MRA podcast. Hey guys, if you're digging the show, then please tell somebody. People might say something to you like, hey man, you know what podcast you listening to? And that's when you say the MRA podcast with Kyle and Kamal. Or the MRA podcast with Kamal and Kyle. Okay, Kamal, President Trump. I know, man. The NRA had their national convention in H-Town, Houston, Texas, just days after the uh, tragic mass shooting in Uvalde, Texas. At the convention. Yeah, just I know. not reading Tone deaf. the room. Yeah, just not Tone reading deaf, the room. Bro. Like, the country, like, yeah, whatever. It just, it just so happened to be, so they canceled it for COVID, even though that's a very, uh, apparently anti-COVID state. But they end up having this thing right after, and just the double and the tripling down, Kamal, is the thing that, I don't know, man. I, I guess I guess there's, there's a time for optimists, but anyway, at the convention. Okay, hold on. I don't even know what that word means. Obstinance. Well, I learned that from uh, one of those Think and Grow Rich types of books. It just means you, you're you just like, this is what I'm doing. This is who I am. I'm not changing it. That's oh, I th- yeah. we, call it, we call that the Kyle Lurby. Hilarious. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's exactly what obstinance is. Not abstinence. <laughs> Never abstinence. Not abstinence. No, no, no. 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 Obstinate. Obstinate. Oh, That's yeah. All you, now I get it. Now I mm-hmm. understand. Yes, man. So at the convention, Trump got on the mic to say that we need to arm our teachers. Come on. Let me tell you something, man. My mom was a teacher. My father was a teacher. Rest in peace, sir. I was a teacher. You are a current teacher. I am going to... Weigh in on this, man. Uh, I am not a huge fan of President Trump. Every time he speaks, I cringe. I don't agree with anything he says, except that it is time to strap him up, dog. You are my boy. I would love to. I would love to have that feeling that Kamal had that four pound on his hip walking around the classroom. Now, I need to know, bro. You're literally in the classroom, man. How do you feel about guns to teachers and how do you feel? Do you feel? Do you fear for your life? Like the Popo says, how do you feel right now in the wake of all these shootings, man? How at you, boy? And now that you know you're in, I don't want to say the city you're in, but now you know Hispanics, a uh, first Hispanic, got into the mix. So how do you feel, bro? Well, summer for me, so I'm kind of Hilarious. a little relaxed. Hilarious. But Kyle, um, I'm gonna say. Echo what you said. I'm not mm-hmm. a fan of President Trump. And every mm-hmm. time he speaks, uh, I cringe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this time is no different. This is the dumbest shit I ever heard in my life. Hilarious. Now, obviously, if I had the had the four pound on my hip, mm-hmm. it'd do wonders for my classroom management. Oh, yes, it would. Yeah, it. it, it, it you know, I get everybody to turn to page thirty five when I wanted them to. Mm-hmm. But aside from that. To expect, no matter how much training we get, because we wouldn't get enough a week, maybe. Yeah, that's true. To expect us to engage in somebody with like an AR-15 is moronic. You know, the police officers who were there on the scene Mm -hmm. did not go inside. And they've had weeks of training. They went to a police academy. Mm -hmm. They have, some of them have been in shootouts. Mm Mm-hmm. And they didn't go in. Why not, though? Wasn't it just a wrong call, Kamal? Wasn't it just a, like a bad judgment call? I hate to pre- compare well, lies Well, I think, to that, honestly, call. I think they probably felt they were outgunned and they really just didn't want to engage. They were, mm. they were naturally, they were scared. Mm. You know, understandably, they were scared. And so to expect uh, a teacher mm-hmm. who, for the most part, they might go to the shooting range, but you ain't never been shot back. It's like somebody training to box in the gym like some 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 you know account yeah, goes to the gym yeah mm-hmm. all that shit and then you put him in the ring with like a, a real boxer it's like none of that shit that he learned in in, in, in boxing class mm-hmm. is gonna translate because mm-hmm. guess what the trainer ain't popping you in the chin mm-hmm. in the nose 
And so, yeah, active shooting, you know, trying to go out there with, with my with my Ruger mm-hmm. when bullets are whiz, whizzing by my head, you know, hitting the, the, the lockers in the background, exploding. Mm-hmm. Nah, it's fucking ridiculous. I can see, I can see a lot of teachers. I can see a lot more carnage. Mm. Kids in the crossfire and all that mm-hmm. stuff. Because no matter what, mm-hmm. You you don't have the 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 real training. You mm-hmm. might be taught how to use a firearm, yeah. But the situations when kids are running by, when to shoot, when's it? When do you have a clear shot? All that stuff. It's nonsense. Uh, and I don't want to uh, hop ahead, Kyle, but you know Trump said there's no sign more inviting to a mass killer than a sign that declares a gun free zone. Yes. All right, and people in that crowd applaud it they cheer mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and i'm gonna say there's no more there's no sign more inviting to a mass killer than when you turn 18 you could buy ar-15 mm. when you turn 18 whatever when you when you become of age anybody mm-hmm. could buy an ar mm-hmm. that is the most inviting shit to a mass killer mm-hmm. i just gotta wait till i turn 18 i just have to wait until i'm 18 that's it. That's the only restriction. <laughs> I bet That's they didn't the even want to have that. That's the only restriction. I just, just can't fuck up and get arrested. Mm-hmm. I just have to be on my best behavior mm-hmm. until I turn 18 and mm-hmm. then I'm going ham. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. the logic behind it, but it's obviously what it is. The gun mm-hmm. lobby pays these people. Mm-hmm. They pay millions and millions of dollars to keep Trump and or to get Trump elected. They mm-hmm. pay millions and millions of dollars for his reelection um, campaign, and that's what they do. Mm-hmm. Right? We have more guns in the United States than people. Mm-hmm. Three hundred million motherfuckers in this country. We have more guns than that. Mm-hmm. This is beyond protecting yourself. This is beyond. Uh, the right to bear arms it's a mm-hmm. sickness i agree i like watching gun movies i like you Love know them. the last boy scout mm-hmm. you know the, you know long kiss good night die hard mm-hmm. i like watching this shit absolutely you know what i'm saying but i don't want to be a part of it Mm-mm. at all yeah well that's that's well said man uh I mean, i'm not even gonna uh add to that except for the fact that if i was teaching and they did have uh guns to the teachers i think those teacher trainings after school would be a lot more interesting man because i'm hell in the pd days and be like oh shit you know we shoot today we going to the range today (laughs) how many how many teachers won't make it past pd when they uh, you know and enact this shit how many accidental you know everybody ain't coordinated everybody can't get past the police academy the fuck you gonna give all the teachers who 95% of them would not have made it through police academy training. I wish y'all was strapped. I'm going to stand by my boy when we come back, man. Offset crawl back to Cardi B twice. Did it work? Hmm. Kamal and I will update you next. It's the MRA Podcast. Hey guys and gals, if you're enjoying the show, let someone know. Whatever app you're listening on, please subscribe, give us five stars, and leave a positive comment. And why wouldn't you give us five stars and a positive comment? We're great. Yes, we are. This helps our placement so that other people can enjoy the show as well. And why wouldn't they? We're great. Kamal, a video went viral of uh, Kurt B watching a yacht sink while her and Offset were on vacation. It's pretty funny, man. She's watching the sink like talking. Offset and Cardi B are on a vacation. They're somewhere tropical, you know, somewhere like you would you'll be in a, a week or two, knowing you, knowing you, somewhere you'll be, somewhere you'll be risking your life real soon, come out. Oh yeah, almost dying. For sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take three, <laughs> almost dead, almost dead. Come out, take three. It's coming. It's coming <laughs> to a summer near you. Oh, it's coming. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> So they were out there doing one of those wifey uh, hubby trips. And let me tell you, man, those are really refreshing to a relationship. And the reason why this struck me, Kamal, is because sometimes I forget that he almost lost his wife, not once, but twice, my guy. Twice. But somehow, they're not only still together, they look happy. I don't know if they really are happy, Kamal, but they look happy. And this feels like an example of 
so, sometimes it feels like it's done. But sometimes if you just put in a little work, work on yourself. I know we want to work on them. Work on yourself. And then they work on themselves. And you learn how to accept the other person for who they are. I don't know how much of that they're doing. I don't know if Offset's just on his best behavior. I don't know if Offset is just hiding his shit better. I don't know which it is. I'm not saying you're still doing your shit, Offset. But I'm saying if you are doing your shit, you're either hiding it better or you're on your best behavior. But you were able to save your marriage twice. And it seemed like it's still going well. Did Offset win, Kamal? Definitely. If this is what Offset truly wanted, if mm -hmm. this is what he wanted, yeah, he's winning. He's yeah. winning big time, mm -hmm. you know, because here's the thing about it. A lot of cats who had, you know what I'm saying, those lapses, the same mm -hmm. lapses as Offset, done dilly. Mm. Done dilly. Done dilly. He, mm -hmm. Offset is easily weekend dad. Oh, yeah. Easily weekend dad, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know. He slipped up a couple of times and he still kept his family. Now he mm -hmm. had to, you know, crawl back, as we mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. uh, some people would say humiliate himself in the public's uh -huh. eye. Uh, but if his ultimate goal was to keep his family intact, mm -hmm. then yeah, Offset is winning. Now mm -hmm. you were you 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 said that he, you don't know if he's learned his lesson or he's keeping his shit tight. I think at this point, man, Offset has been famous for a very, 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 very long time. Yes, he has. After a while, I think, like, the groupies and all that stuff and the extra chicks, I think for some people, the shit gets old. Mm. I think for some people, the shit gets old, especially the afterwards you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. you know when he's lying in the bed with his wife it's like the conversation he might enjoy her company enjoy her conversation absolutely and then like you know somebody else might say some stupid shit to him oh, what the fuck just Why go right here yeah, yeah get just out of go here. just yeah. go yeah and he doesn't enjoy their company mm -hmm. you know and honestly i know it might be hard for some people to believe that is a big part of relationships yeah you man. know speak on it yeah, that's a big part of it, the camaraderie. Mm -hmm. And I know most of the relationships, my former relationships, it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. It was like, man, I, at the end of the day, when I really kept it 100, I didn't really like being around them. Absolutely. But <laughs> let me tell you something. As a dude that hates being around most people, yeah, it helps me to tolerate you if we're having a lot of sex and if I'm getting my space. I, I need to be bribed, Kamal, because I'm one of those people that just needs to be alone a lot. I just do. I like being alone a lot. Yeah, a lot. And yeah. so if somebody's going to be in my space, like Kamal, you and I have been friends for a very long time, man. And one right. of the things, one one of the secrets to our relationship, and most people wouldn't wouldn't equate this, is we 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 get together regularly, but then not too regularly. Oh, aside from the show, yeah. So I've my probably point seen is, you once in person in yeah. wow. six months. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Was it after but, your pop's funeral, I don't see. Before that, I don't know when. Exactly. So my point oh, Domin is. Oh, uh, Lax party. Yeah. So it's enough to keep it going, but not so much that it's like, ah, oh, this motherfucker, man. Why does dude, <laughs> and when he going home, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why does he always eating another plate? Don't he know He's I got kids? Here again. <laughs> Oh, you why know. Did, why do teachers have so many vacations? <laughs> <laughs> Summer, Christmas, spring, this is always here. So I guess my point is, man, for me, it's hard for me to be around people. But if you want somebody around, sweeten the deal for them. You know what I mean? What do they like? If they like flowers, bribe them with a little flowers. I know the word bribery sounds on, on romantic and shit like that, but it's like, fuck that shit, man. I mean, if you want to spend some time with a motherfucker that, that you know, would probably rather be doing other things, well, why you rather be doing other things? You should, you should. Uh, if you're saying you should, you, you, you're you already the problem. Uh, let me just go back to what you said, though, man. The thing that, that bothers me, man, is number one, a lot of times people in their relationship, but their feelings aren't gone yet. They're just mm -hmm. mad. And then once they get over what the person did, now they just miss them. 
And so what I love about what Cardi B did is she knew Offset did his part. He embarrassed himself, but she knew she still loved this man. Mm -hmm. And she would be, she could always get some, some, you know, dick from another dude. But at the same time, that's her dude. Right. And they got a family. They, nobody, nobody gets her. Yeah. Like Offset. Bam. Bam. You know, and, and, I, and that's, yeah, truly, truly, truly. And I think honestly, mm -hmm. if, if, if there wasn't for social media and society and TMZ, yep. I don't think Offset ever would have been kicked ever. out. Ever. Yeah, I don't think he ever would have been kicked out, but it's like uh -huh. after, you well, know. Well, unless he got real sloppy, because I've been it, real sloppy before. Right, 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 right. I'm saying, like, yes. Yes, you have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I yes. think, honestly, even even with your sloppiness. Yeah, yeah, I still could have got back in there. You could have still Absolutely. got back All in facts. there. All exactly. facts. Exactly. Yeah. But I was being obstinate. You were being Kyle. I was being Kyle, man. I decided that, you know what? As much as I love you, I know this, this issue is going to come back up. So if you can't handle this side of me, I think it's best that we just try this a different way. When we come back, man, the great running back known as Ricky Williams has taken his wife's name. How do we feel about that? We'll talk about it next the MRE Podcast. You listen to us, but Kamal and I want you to know that we listen to you too. Even if we don't always respond to your tweets in a timely manner. I love how you say we, man. <laughs> so if you have some feedback, maybe you agree. Maybe you disagree. Or maybe you just want to tell us how much you love the show or that you want to testify about how we specifically helped you out. Or maybe you just want to tell Kamal how he was right or wrong. But mostly right. Whatever you want to tell us, hit us on our social. I'm at Kyle Irby. I'm at Angry Kamal. Hit us up and you just might hear your comment on the air. I promise. We'll be gentle. Kamal, NFL running back, former Heisman Trophy winning running back, Ricky Williams, has changed his name. Now, first of all, I did not know this. His name is Eric. His real name is Eric. And I thought, how in the hell did he get to Ricky from Eric? And then I saw the way he spells his name, Kamal. Mm. And he spells his name Air Rick. Like... <laughs> And to be such a, a white people friendly young man, that's a hood ass name for me, dog. That's a hood ass Eric. Ricky as in Eric. Yeah. Eric. It's like uh Eric. cats from DC. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like from, yeah, exactly. from the area. You from the area? From the area. Are you from the area? From the area. Oh, okay. You from Yeah. So <laughs> his name, his government name is Eric. Eric. Yeah. And he changed his last name, his first and last name. So he's no longer being known as Ricky. He's going back to his government name as Eric, but he's dropping the Williams and he's taking his wife's name, last name of Miron. So he is now Eric Miron. That is his new name, period. Ricky Williams is gone. And so Kamal, you know, as a man like me, it triggers me when I hear a brother taking his wife's last name. I'm like, ah. And then when he talks about the reason why that's the thing that sounds good until you really break down what he says. He says that there's still an imbalance in relationships uh. and he wanted to make kind of level the playing field by taking her name. And my question is, yes, there is an imbalance in relationships, guys. Absolutely. Because last time I checked, uh, when it's divorce time, the woman gets all the shit and the man is at his mama's couch. <laughs> it ain't no balance at all. Nah. She, she absolutely gets all the say when it comes to sex. When she wants sex, y'all having sex. When you want sex, if she wants sex, y'all having sex. If she don't, you're staring at the ceiling in frustration. Dude, and she gets to choose the furniture. The, Not just the furniture, the, decor. the house. Oh, yeah, the house, yeah. The house. Anybody who's ever seen House Hunters knows. She's picking the house. She's going to act like it, it might be y'all's choice. Let's <laughs> talk. No, it's what she wants. Kamal, if your woman moves into your house, she's going to change all of the decorations to what makes her happy. Oh, yeah. Dude, I tried to, I bought a bunch of movie posters. I've seen those. They got like House Party, got all those Eddie Murphy movies. Those are great. I haven't seen those in forever. Dude, what happened to them, Kamal? They're in the garage. And she was like, eh. I was like, I want to put my movie posters up. She was like, nah, that's not going to work. You can pick one. It's like, wait a second, man. I got a bunch of Wesley Snipes movies. I'm going to pick one. Got Passenger 57, White Man Can't Jump. 
Like like murder at sixteen hundred. Like what? What are we doing? Play oh, one oh. and two. Ah, you know what? I just won't have none. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. You win. Yeah. Yeah. Pick one. That's yeah. like picking you know, like a Sophie's choice. With you know, pick one of your kids to kill. Like nah, I can't do that. And you know what, come out. Your your plight is not unique. This is pretty much every married man in the country learns very fast that it's all about happy wife, happy life. And so when he talks about imbalance, I took her name out of the imbalance. No, dog. If she has your name, that's the only balance we get. And most of these modern women are taking are still keeping their name and adding you with the hyphen. And that's balancing balancing their name. But the point is, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, bro, talking about there's an imbalance. If unless you're talking about how we have lost what we used to have, which is fine because, you know, we didn't do too well when we were running shit. But now it's just the pendulum has completely swung the other direction. And Ricky Williams took his wife's name. How do you feel about that, dog? Uh, if that's what the kids are doing, Ricky's not a kid. He's a grown ass. Yeah, man. Ricky's like a few years younger than me. Yeah, Ricky's got to be in his forties. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't, you know, mm -hmm. he's got to be in his forties. So it's not like this is like one of the most Gen Xers or whatever, whatever Gen Zers. Mm -hmm. I say Gen X. We're Gen X, right? I'm Gen X. I don't know. Come on. Yeah. Okay. He's not. He's younger than. He's uh, older than millennial. Mm -hmm. You know, that's for God dunk sure. And so mm. it's like he's not one of these young kids, but he is kind of like hippie-ish and flower childy ish yeah, 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 yeah. And, and yeah, so yeah, maybe yeah. that's what they that's what those guys feel is necessary. Mm -hmm. But I also have an issue with the what he said about like it's something she can brag to her friends about. Oof, that bothered me. Yeah, because you know what she can also brag about to her friends? What does that come out? What She's that married come out? to Ricky Williams. Ding, 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 come out. And a I mean, former on, NFL dude. player, former Heisman Trophy. My husband has a Heisman Trophy in our house. That is bragworthy What does your husband right have? There. Your husband have a Heisman Trophy, you know? No. Like only like, what, 50 people? Or I don't even know. How old is the Heisman? 60, 70 people have ever won this? There's not 100. There's not 100. So <laughs> My he, husband is, is, is part of a unique class. Yes, a very unique class that him and OJ Simpson are both in. But OJ, but that's the one you want to be in the club of OJ. That's the club. Yeah, man. If you want to be in the club of OJ, it's like the Heisman. Yeah. After Heisman, that, Heisman. Yeah. you don't want to be. In you that. don't want to be in that club of OJ, club. nah. <laughs> so I mean, listen, man. If that's if that's how you want to roll, man. That go ahead, man. But I think the reason why it triggers me, man, is because I know I have been known a time or two. Like Axel Foley has fractured the law a time or two. Yeah. I have been pressured into things that I did not necessarily want to do a time or two. Hmm. And I think what really scares me is the thought of what if I was pressured to give up my last name? Now, I don't tend to go with the type of woman that would want me to give up my last name. Like that would be an early exit for me. But if she's smart enough to get me with this great gal, and then maybe we get a couple kids or whatever. And then when she locks me, and now all of a sudden all the perks are gone and now she's just, oh, it's just change after change after change. And one of the changes is change my name. It wouldn't happen in the first day. It wouldn't happen in the second year, Kamal. But I guess my fear is, I don't know how long I will continue to be nagged about something until I finally say, fine, let's just do this so you'll just leave me alone. Do it. Fine. Fine. I can see fine. myself changing my name for the right chick like i could easily see myself being like kamal the stallion hilarious dude yes i, I wouldn't <laughs> mind that you know yes i hope i would never go out like that and if i ever do come out please put me in this next segment when we come back it's time for whole shit it's the mra podcast guys i have a comedy album it's called be a man at all times and it's on what's it on oh Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you stream your content. It's a damn good comedy album. I appreciate that, man. There's Stand Up on there. Kamal and I wrote a whodunit mystery called The Case of the Missing Balls. That's on there. Based on the true story. <laughs> Check out the album. Show your boys some support. And you can buy it on iTunes. Keyword, buy it. Stop streaming. Okay, Kamal, it's time for whole shit. What you got, right. though? Now, this is contingent on if everything I'm about to say is true. So this is okay. a contingency whole shit. Okay. This goes to a rapper from Jacksonville named K Su. K Su. Okay. All right. It gets the whole shit contingency. Mm -hmm. You know. My yes. Name. All right. So 
He's currently locked up and wait awaiting trial for three murders, one of which he allegedly bragged about on the internet. All right. Well, mm -hmm. his father, who prosecutors claim is the leader of the gang in which Kesu is a member of, is charged mm -hmm. as an accessory after the fact of first degree murder. Okay. So, you know, no, cool plot twist: the father has mm -hmm. now agreed to testify against the son, snitching wow. on his son. Okay. Wow. So pops wow. is getting a, a bunch of online ridicule and slander, uh, and apparently he's had enough. He's had mm -hmm. enough of this slander and all this bullshit, right? So he posted on Instagram mm -hmm. his reasons for cooperating against his son. So pops mm -hmm. posed the question: Who leaves their daddy in prison to rot? Especially when you know he's innocent. Mm -hmm. Pops also said that he would have been free. He, he, this is what he said: He would have been free, this daddy no matter what his consequences would have been. So if I'm reading between mm -hmm. the lines, Pops is mm -hmm. implying that the son can't exonerate the Pops without snitching on the self. Mm -hmm. So if all this is true, then k -Su has committed first degree whole shit. Even if Pops mm -hmm. introduced him to that life, Kyle, I gotta say, you don't knowingly let another mm -hmm. man take the fall for your fuck ups, especially the man who changed your diapers. Ah, I'm on the you fence. On the fence. One, come on. <laughs> I'm on the fence of this dog because first of all, you're absolutely right. His father is a gangster. Right. Okay. And his father knows the code of no yes. snitching. This guy, K Su, may have become a gangster if his daddy was not. But if your daddy's a gangster, there's a good You're gonna follow in Pop's footsteps. You wanna You're gonna follow in Pop's footsteps. And so I the only way I can ex I can exonerate this from being whole shit is if K Su told on Pops. If he told on Pops, that's foul. But if he ain't said nothing, and if somehow it looks like Pops did it, I don't know if K Su is supposed to come th confess to go to jail. I don't know how old Pops is. Fifty one. Might have had a good run. Fifty one years <laughs> old. <laughs> That's kind of young, dude. <laughs> well, the, here's the thing about it. The reason why I think the reason why it gets the whole shit for me, mm -hmm. if all this shit's true, dude kind of bragged about the murder online, which led you know possibly to the charges being brought on him. Now he's not he's not right. on trial for the murder. Son, you're saying you're saying son bragged, right? So yeah, because he did some some boneheaded shit, mm -hmm. pops. Is implicated in this murder. Now he's not. He's not on trial. He's not charged with the actual murder, but just mm. an accessory, mm. an accessory to first degree murder. Mm. Okay. And uh, so pops is like, "Hey man, I had shit to do with this. I'm totally innocent. And I'm sitting in jail." Mm. And so maybe mm. son That's is like, funny. you know, dad got to stand tall because I know dad can beat this. No dad can beat it because he ain't do he ain't did shit. And Pops is like, that is a what fact. the fuck am I supposed to? Why am I in jail? My daddy, and what he did was, I think for me, the whole shit was when he said, who to let their daddy rot in prison? I'm like, yeah, I, mm -hmm. I guess I probably wouldn't let my daddy rot in prison either. And he said that I he, he would have did the same shit to his, to his father. He said, I no matter what. If I gotta do fifty yeah. years, I'm getting my pops out of jail. If he didn't do, if I know he didn't do the shit, that's yeah. Right. So that's where it's the whole shit. That's I right, understand bro. your apprehension for like labeling Ugh. this full fledged whole yeah, shit. I get it. Tough one, this is but a tough it's like, one, man. hey man, when, when when pops put it that way, and I know pops didn't do it. I'm a hundred percent positive. Yeah, Not that me and pops did a crime and we was together, and it's like we both got caught. And it's like, nah, I get that. But Pops, even mm -hmm. if Pops mm -hmm. is the gangsterest gangster and he's innocent, mm -hmm. now Pops yes. probably could be doing some time for some other shit he got away with. But most likely in this particular case, ah, uh, Kesu, man, get your Pops out of prison, man. Well, man, I'll say this. We are he I think Kesu is making his Pops have to snitch. Cause after a while, Pops mm -hmm. is like, Well, I know my boy gonna clear this shit up. I know my boy gonna mm -hmm. clear this shit up. <laughs> After a first week, okay, well, I know he getting he talking to his lawyer, getting his ducks in the row, but I know my boy ain't going uh -huh. to clear this shit up. All right, we good. Hey, we good, y'all. We good. Sonny <laughs> boy got this. 
Week three. We good, bro. My, my boy solid. Week nine. Uh, I, I mean, I thought we was good. Week 10. Okay. I hope yeah. we good. Week 12. We ain't good, man. Where's that? Where's the at? paperwork? Whatever y'all need me to sign. Yeah, man. That's some that's bullshit. We come back, man. We get into our personal lives. And then we got a dear Irby from a woman who wants to know if she should give her ex a nookie on an overnight soccer trip. What do we say? Find out soon. This is the MRA Podcast. Hey guys, what's up? If you're enjoying this show, do us a favor and donate to our Patreon. Word. Just go to www.patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com and make a donation to the MRA podcast of Kyle and Kamal. Word. It's that simple. Listen to the show, love the show, share the show, break the show off with some dough. Pars. Kamal, you know, my baby's uh, out of state, as you know, man, and my youngest baby is out of state and I came to visit and she's got this uh, ballet. She had two ballet How recitals was that? come out, two of them. It was great, man, it was great. I mean, it, it, I ain't, let me be real. It was painful after she was done, but I was happy <laughs> when she was out there doing her thing, man, cause she shined, she's very happy. Her mom really pushes her in the dance category because you know my theory about if you didn't quite get what you thought you needed as a child in a certain area, you're going to make sure your child is enriched in that area. And his mom, her mom uh, totally qualifies for that, man. She pushes her in the dance realm. And my baby girl, man, she is, she's becoming a little dancing machine, man. And they're talking about next year, putting her on, on her toes and ballet, they call it going on point. Some of you girl dads know what the hell I'm talking about. Come out. You not don't have a dad. I mean, a girl, you have a dad, but you don't have a daughter. Um, but speaking of you not having a daughter, man, I was watching, I don't know if you've ever seen this movie. I doubt you have because you, you have sons. But there's a movie with Mark Lawrence and Ray College Road Trip called, oh my God, it's so damn funny. Really no, nah, that's what Martin was doing, like the, 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 the Eddie Murphy route, going to family movies. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, uh, that's my stop. Uh, Couldn't stop do it. with Martin. Yeah. <laughs> You know what's funny is when I was watching that with my baby girl because she loves Martin because I think my mom introduced her to my aunt, I'm the man. And of course she loves Raymond Simone. And I was like, you know, they work together. And she was like, <laughs> did they? And watching that, I thought of you because you didn't want Skillsy Willsy to go too far away. So the whole movie, man, Martin is trying to get his daughter to go to a, a close home school and uh, basically, the, the, your name came up like, man, that is Kamal. If if he had a daughter who wanted to go far away, man. But it's hilarious, man. You get a chance, go back and watch on Disney+. Plus. I mean, the movie, it drags at times, yeah. a lot of times. But comedic, comedic, they're, they're killing it, though. You, you're going to laugh. Well, I want to say this. If, uh, if your girl is in the Martin, I have some suggestions for mm-hmm. her. Uh, you so Come crazy. On, uh, thin line between love and hate. The stand-up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, man. She's, hey, she's, she's a, a Martin child, fan. Hey, she's like a Martin fan. I'm just saying. I'm never too uh, young to, to start your, your your goal of Martin. Oh, yeah. Your skills, Martin man. I don't know. Skills was really, really young. He was watching uh, Nothing to Lose. Mm-hmm. What was the one, man, where he was going to Mexico, dude? And Blue he was Streak. A cop and, he, and he had you. <laughs> That's one of the yeah, funniest Yeah, definitely. Moves, yeah. Man. That's what that is. I, I got to watch Blue Streak. Blue Streak great. Man. Hey, man, we come back, man. We have a dear Irby from a woman who wants to know if she should give her ex a nookie on an overnight soccer trip. What do we say? Find out next is the MRA Podcast. You need some advice in your relationship? And can't afford a therapist? Yeah. Hit us up and we'll get you through this. We won't even charge you a copay. Exactly. The Dear Irby Letter is our longest standing segment on the MRA dating all the way back to the webisodes. This is where we truly save relationships one listener at a time. We've saved marriages. Encouraged divorce. Taught a guy how to please his woman. Encouraged divorce. Yeah. So hit us up for advice and we'll help you out. Send your emails to dearirby at the mrapodcast.com. That is dearirby at the MRA mrapodcast.com Let's get into this Dear Irby letter. Let us. Dear Irby, my husband and I got divorced last year and although we were both reluctant to do so, it's been the best thing for us. We get along so much better. What'd you say, Kamal? That's I, I, I saw it coming. Like, yes. They get yes. along great. Of course. We get along so much better now that we have released each other from meeting our needs deep. I think he'd agree. 
that he is a much better father to our boys now that he has joint custody. In the past, he let me do all the work while he focused on his own activities, letting me fall deeper and deeper into resentment. Mm, leaving me, not letting me. But it's still funny. Anyway, the problem is now that we don't fight anymore, I am becoming attracted to him again. You don't say. We have not spent the night under the same roof in over a year, but we will be staying together next month when our son has a soccer tournament in Hawaii. The rooms near the event are just too expensive, so we decided to share a suite. Mm -mm. I have not gotten laid in a year. Is it okay if I give him some on this trip? Or do you think I'm setting myself up for a disaster? Curious on your opinion, Charlotte and Rancho, assuming that's Cucamonga, in the eye of Southern California. Come out, what you think, man? Help Charlotte out. Charlotte, mm -hmm. uh, you asking the question, do we think, do I think you're setting yourself up for a disaster? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm, mm, mm. It's a recipe for a disaster. You're, you're, you're in line for a vicious cycle. You're about to hop into a vicious cycle. Now mm -hmm. you're saying you're attracted to him because you guys don't fight anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't fight anymore because he's doing a lot of the, the heavy lifting that mm -hmm. you complained about in the first place. Mm -hmm. So giving him the nookie is going to lead to like more nookie time, more mm -hmm. hanging out. Eventually, Pops is going to stay over a couple mm -hmm. nights a week, you know, a, a, a week. And then he's moving back, moving back in. And then you guys are back at it again. Mm -hmm. Now, once he's back in the house, guess what? Mm -hmm. Mom job is back. You are rehired and he can go back to his own activities, which is going to yep. cause you more resentment, which is going to mm -hmm. cause y'all to fight more and it's going to cause him to bounce. Mm -hmm. You're only attracted to him because you ain't beefing with him. You ain't pissed mm -hmm. off at him. And the only way you cannot be mad at him is for him to be living somewhere else, mm -hmm. co-parenting. It's the only way. The other way, when you guys are trying to make this shit work out together, it didn't work. It did not work. Kyle, I've been married twice. You know yes, that, you right? Have. Yes, yeah, you yeah. have. I'm not sure yes. if I told you that, but yeah, yes. I've been married twice. Two out of what? Two out of five? Or just Two out of five. Yeah, something <laughs> like that. But here's the thing about it. Yeah. So up? after uh, me and my first wife uh, mm -hmm. broke up, mm -hmm. I did a lot, a lot, a ton, a ton of the heavy lifting, right? Oh yeah, you should because be. when he was with me, when he was with me, I you know pretty you know I was like a single parent, mm -hmm. so I did a lot of stuff: doctor's appointments, school, just everything, homework, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sports, you know, shopping, haircuts. I did it all. Yes, you did. And then, you know. With my well, my second wife, we, we're raising a kid. It's two of us. We're together. Mm -hmm. She does a lot of the mm -hmm. the school, the you know, a lot of the other stuff, the doctor, all of that stuff. You know, mm -hmm. and she complains about it. <laughs> yeah. Like, what happened to the man who I fell in love with, who was extra extra daddy and all that? I was like, uh -huh. I did that because I had to. Yeah. I did that because I had to, you know, yeah. I don't have to do that anymore. You know, it's like when James Harden got to Philadelphia, it's probably a bad analogy, but, <laughs> but they're like, how come he's not scoring 50 points every game? That's because I had to do that shit. I don't have to do that now. I have Joel Embiid here. Just let me know when you need me. Bad analogy because I know the people in Philadelphia can't stand James Harden and stuff like that. And I can see, As they should. I yeah. can see my current wife and not be able to stand me. You know I'm just saying. <laughs> but though, no, Charlotte, I, I, I'm gonna stand by my analogy. I think I think it's be, uh, it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. You only, only, only find this man attractive. Because he's doing the shit that he has to do. Not necessarily that he wants to do. Mm -hmm. That he has to do. And if you strip away the kids and the responsibility, yes, you are attracted to the man. I don't know if you guys had kids or you guys were married before kids. or you Obviously, you had to be together before you had children. 
Mm-hmm. And before children, you were naturally, physically, emotionally, intellectually attracted to this man. Mm-hmm. The kids mm-hmm. have made you see who he really is. Mm. And you don't like him. Mm. You don't like that man. Mm-hmm. Look, enjoy the soccer vacation. You know, go see your kid in the soccer tournament. You know, play Scrabble, whatever it is families mm-hmm. do, but do not, do not creep to that man's bedroom mm. when the lights go out. Mm. 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 Take, a vibra- it, take a vibrator. Take a vibrator. Take a vibrator if you got to, but do not cross that man's threshold. Mm. 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 Come out. When we come back, I'm gonna weigh in. You need some advice in your relationship and can't afford a therapist? Yeah. Hit us up and we'll get you through this. We won't even charge you a copay. Exactly. The Dear Irby Letter is our longest standing segment on the MRA dating all the way back to the webisodes. This is where we truly save relationships one listener at a time. We've saved marriages. Encouraged divorce. Taught a guy how to please his woman. Encouraged divorce. Yeah. So hit us up for advice and we'll help you out. Send your emails to Dear Irby at the MRA podcast.com. That is Dear Irby at the MRA MRAPodcast.com. Kamala, as usual, you're dropping jewels. Uh, and as usual, I don't agree with you. Here's the thing, man. <laughs> no, I agree in some ways. Um, I wish this could work. I wish you could just, instead of having a vibrator, just get your back blown out by your old partner and enjoy yourself. But the problem is probably going to be you. Now, it's not not, it's not fair, but let me just tell you, Charlotte. I don't know why. Come on, you can relate to this. Mm. You've had women where you guys are just having a good time, but as soon as you dip the weenie, she's like, well, what are we now? Like, how, 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 we was just, we just having a good time. Uh. Y'all are the ones that need to, 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 to think because we've had sex now these new things have to happen. If you could just have sex with him and then let him go home, you could experience happiness. You are the problem, most likely. Or I know sometimes guys get clingy. Then since y'all have the power, tell him, remind him what happened last time. Remind him of what we said. He will be exposed if you guys start living together again. So keep it what it is. Stay in your house. I'll stay in mine. Let's continue to co-parent. If we both feel like having sex, the funny thing is, come on, we've never even mentioned that he may not want to do this. We're just assuming he does, and we're probably right. Hmm. Or at least that he's willing. But the ball is in your court now, Charlotte. All you have to do is just enjoy it for what it is instead of what other people say it should be. Why don't y'all get back together? Why don't y'all stay happy? Why don't you do what is working this? Keep doing this. And then, if you continue to like it, you can try something else at another time. But I don't change it. Do what's working. Don't change it. Just keep it to what it is. If you want to throw in a little sex from time to time, but if you start making it going back to where you were, you're going to go back to that where you were when you were miserable. Twitter, Instagram, and Clubhouse at Angry Kamal. I am at Kyle Irby 13 on Instagram because my original Instagram was hacked and I still don't have it back. Thanks a lot, Instagram. Thank you so much for not giving a damn about all the efforts I've made to get my old shit back. It has lit a fire under me to rebuild the new one. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So I'm at Kyle Irby 13 on Instagram, regular old Kyle Irby on Facebook and Twitter. This was our first video version of the podcast, man. We got through the first one, had some glitches, but that's okay. That's being said. Can can I just say, like looking at both of our screens, you look super professional. It looks like I'm doing like like a podcast version, a karaoke karaoke version of a podcast. 
We're going to get you your mic back, Kamal. <laughs> your SM7B is coming I, in the mail. I've been comfortable. We'll have you tight yeah, by next I have week. been comfortable for how long? Maybe it was two years, or whatever. Yes, man. More than yes. That. 200 episodes. Not 199. No, I'm saying like since since we've gone from yeah, since the pandemic. Right. So I've been mm-hmm. I've been super duper comfortable, mm-hmm. and it's like ah oh, man, I gotta I gotta get my shit together, man. I'm looking like. You know, got a, a Casio mic. You know, we're gonna get t-shirt, you straight. Shit like that. I like that. Look at that shit, man. Look at you, got man. He's like a professional podcaster. Man, look at you, man. And while I'm over here living in a fucking bubble, <laughs> a fucking hovel, a hovel, a hovel. In a hovel. fucking hovel. Uh, MR, at the MRA Podcast is where you can find us both on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. KyleRuby.com is my website. The MRA Podcast.com is where you can listen to all 200 episodes that we have done. Check us out on Dynasty Radio NY, our Philly in New York. Kamal, I appreciate you, man. You've been riding with me for longer than 200 episodes, man. We've been rolling. We're going to keep on rolling, man. I appreciate no you, my problem, brother. man. Pleasure to have you. Pleasure to be here. Amen. Ladies, we love you. Fellas, be a man at all times. MRA.